So now let's describe the uh, quantitative uh, aspect of linear motion. So let's take a look at these two uh, points in a, in a graph that you did uh, outside. Um, you have uh, one runner uh, moving in a direction from the observer that is at zero. So that was runner A. And then we have another runner that was going to start 25 meters away from the observer. And uh, we'll try to find some uh, quantitative uh, aspect of this uh, in terms of slope and its physical meaning. So we have a, a position versus time graph here of the two runners. So in mass, the, the dependent variable is plotted on the y and the independent variable is plotted on the x you learned that so uh, as a function um, you have y is equal to f so function for linear motion then would be y is equal to the slope so we will represent the slope as lowercase k in mechanics times dx plus the y-intercept where dx is zero so in, in this case we could see that the y is the position and the x would be the time so we can rewrite that as time so it will be k plus B now looking at this uh, we can find the slope of the graph so we know in math that the slope is rise over run so we have the change in Y over the change in X knowing the change in Y is the position which is which is X and the x is the time and this is change in displacement or change in position or change in time so we have final minus initial final minus initial or x naught or just x you will see that um, so let's say uh, the object traveled uh, runner a object traveled uh, and reach about 25 meters and we took one data point which is five meters and it took about five seconds okay so we have 20 meters over five seconds so that's the slope or we could say uh, four meter per second in terms of runner a so runner a was moving in a positive slope now let's take a look at runner B so runner B having the same mathematical slope equation we could say that it traveled so I'm just gonna simplify this so it started at 25 meter mark and ended up at the 5 meter mark so 25 meters over the same period of five seconds so we will see here that it is negative 20 meters from the observer so it's moving towards the observer so runner B is moving towards the observer runner A is moving away from the observer so we can see here the the effect of the frame of reference on describing motion right so that's why it's important to have that frame of reference so we will have here negative four meter per second so that is runner B so we can see here that the two uh, speed so did they cover the same path so they travel a straight path so they covered technically the same average speed right so they have the same average speed however um, the velocity the velocity is it the same 
so it is not the same why because velocity is a vector quantity so we have to look into the direction so therefore one is positive the other is negative so based from the observer the object one of the object is moving away from him the other one is moving towards him so we can write the uh, slope equation for runner a to be a is equal to what's the slope four meter per second times the time plus where that started five meters right so for runner B we can write it as negative four meter per second times time plus started at 25 meters so you could see from here slope equations technically the same in terms of the function but then in terms of how you describe their motion using a frame of reference uh, relative to the origin so the observer is it's at the zero mark so that's the reference point then the two can be described differently so that's one aspect of, of quantitative description uh, in terms of motion and we can determine some other equations relative to it so uh, we know that the velocity is equal to a change in displacement over a change in time and we know that it is x minus i over time usually time starts at zero so we could just write time in this case so we will have t and from there we could find the displacement so we can find the displacement so finding displacement so finding displacement in a constant velocity graph so we can determine that which is equal to velocity on the x direction times time and knowing change in velocity is x sub f minus x sub i and then v sub x times time we can determine what will be the final uh, distance or displacement rather covered so we can have that sub i plus v sub x times time so we just derive an equation for finding the displacement so we know the physical quantity slope is the velocity so if we go back to that graph this gives us an idea that is the velocity of the object so the velocity of the object in this case is constant so you can determine other points and you'll end up with the same velocity and that gives us the idea that the velocity is constant and it's also constant uh, at a particular instant and that can be considered as instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity so the velocity at an instant when I look at an instant and then determine the change in position over change in time given this trend I would know that the instant velocity is the same as the average velocity so we can also see some equations like this so they use different subscript and it's technically just the same 